Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. I'm Mark Stein, Thrive founder and your podcast host. We're creating sustainable, inclusive, and multi-generational residential communities from repurposed big box stores or other unused buildings. By offering unique and ecological co-living options, our aim is to combat the epidemic of isolation, revitalize communities, and help others discover the many benefits of engaged community living. In this podcast series, join us as we discuss co-living and other aspects of our concept, in addition to bringing you interesting people who are doing cool things from around the world. Through this podcast, learn more about our concept and see how Thrive Co-Living Communities will bring together people from all walks of life. To find more about us, visit www.thrivecolivingcommunities.org. Thanks for watching and enjoy the podcast. So, hi everybody. Welcome back to the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. Glad to have you with us. Um, and this is going to be a Thrive Business episode. Um, I have with me as my guest, Mark McNulty, who is a business coach with Action Coach. I'll let him talk a little more about his background in a moment, but uh, we want to explore business coaching and uh, everything, all the ins and outs of business coaching. Uh, so Mark, so glad to have you with me. I was really impressed when we met, uh, maybe it's been six, eight months ago now. And uh, so I'm really pleased to have you on the podcast. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you, Mark. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk about this. This is obviously a topic that uh, near and dear to my heart. And uh, I know there's a lot of questions out there. I get questions all the time, just like I'm sure you do to, you know, as people are discovering the, you know, the, the coaching world and just, you know, how to best engage with coaches in, in a way that, you know, makes the most sense for their business. So let's start out with your background. Um, how did you get into coaching? Did you have run other businesses? Um, and what, you know, you've got to be a particular type of person to, to do this work. So what, what is it about coaching that really grabbed you uh, and led you to, to want to do it? Okay, yeah. Well, so, you know, my story is, um, you know, I'm actually a, a reco what I call a recovering engineer. Uh, I spent 20 years in the electronics industry. I'm an electrical engineer do, and it's in the software world for 20 years. But um, and I quickly learned that engineering really wasn't my passion. It was just my job. And what I really enjoyed the most, which was unusual for engineers, was I enjoyed developing people, um, developing teams, developing business business lines. And so uh, so I looked for I looked for in my corporate career, I looked for opportunities to lead business units, um, to do product development, customer service, all the things that engineers typically don't do. But that's what I really enjoyed. And so I spent 20 years, you know, not just learning how to be a better engineer, but how to be a, a leader, how to be a business unit leader, uh, how to develop people, how to develop teams, how to hire teams, how to fire t people, um, you know, how to recruit. Um, I developed, you know, I, I typically in every position I had, except for my very last one, I, I basically developed my replacement so that I could move on to another position because they weren't going to let me move on to another position if nobody could do what I did. So, um, you know, I was also training and, and building up my own leadership team behind me so that I could move on and try something else. So um, like many in the corporate world, I got downsized. Um, and decided that um, it was time to stay out of the engineering world and really go after my passion, which was teaching, teaching, mentoring, uh, developing leaders, uh, developing teams. And I wanted to, and I chose to do that in the small business world. Um, got a small business history in my family, um, and both on my mom and dad's side, um, entrepreneurs and, and small business owners, and then also teachers. So I was bringing all that together. And I, I chose the small business coaching because that was where I felt I could have the biggest impact. Um, executive coaching, there were a lot of those out there already, and you can't have as much impact on, on individual lives and communities that you can working in that small in the small business world where 
you know, people are, you know, this is their livelihood, this is their family, this is their community, and we can have a big impact. And so that uh, that's where I went, because I wanted to have as big an impact as possible on the communities that I live in, that I serve, and I, I can do that more through this than, than I ever could in a corporate career. How old is business coaching? I mean, it's a relatively new term. I suspect it was previous incarnations were business consultants, but uh, talk a little bit about how this field uh, has started. So in the small business world, there were, so like, at, at, I'm with, I'm with the part of Action Coach, and Action Coach was probably, to our knowledge, the first small business coaching business that came out, and that, and that was 28 years ago. So Action Coach has been around 28 years. Um, we're started in Australia. We're now in. We're based in the U.S. now, and we've got um, coaches in 84 countries, about 1,200 coaches around the world. So, but you know, prior to that, I'd say so. I'd say bit small business coaching is probably 28, 30 years old. Before that, it was the consultants, and usually, in the small business arena, it, they were the um, process consultants or the cost reduction consultants. Um, they would come in, you know, they'd send 10 people on site and swarm your business for a few days and, and you know, and, pick and send you a manual about this thick of all the recommendations and then say, hey, for $100,000, we can come in and implement all this for you. Um, so that was kind of the original small business consultant. So when I started coaching, you know, the two, the two biggest things I had were, you're a what? Um, because nobody, nobody ever heard of business coach. And then the other one is the few people that had, in the small business world that had, you know, that had and privately held businesses that had had consultants come in, a lot of them had had a bad experience because of the, and there's a couple companies, I'm not gonna name names, there are a couple companies that are, they're, they're worldwide, that, you know, they come in, they do that. And um, it's, it's a little bit of bait and switch and they just overwhelm you and it's a really hard sales pitch um, and and I, I, I've run into many business owners that shelled out six figures and were really just bitterly disappointed and, um, you know, felt completely ripped off. And, um, you know, so it's come a long way in, in 30 years. Um, you know, I've, I've been doing it for 17 years. So I started in 2004 um, and I've uh, been doing it 17 years and we've got locations now in Kentucky, based in Louisville, and Indiana, based in New Albany. Um, so we just opened our second location, October 1st, in Southern Indiana. Really excited about that. But you know, it's come a long way to where I, I rarely get your what anymore. But they still need education on what exactly is a coach and how do they really help. And and now there there are a lot of people getting into business coaching and coaching of all types, fitness. Um, uh, and that brings up a question about uh, qualifications. Um, there, I'm sure there are some certifications now. So it's uh, as a lot of industries do, they become more professionalized over mm -hmm. time. Talk a little bit about that certifications, education, that sort of thing. And uh, my experience is that except for brain surgeons, um, education, uh, and quality don't necessarily go together uh, and certifications. Um, I would want my brain surgeon to be certified at, a, at an MD, but uh, so talk a little bit about, is there a disconnect, do you think, between certifications and educational levels and quality of coaching? So, um, so first of all, you know, certification. So certification, you know, as a business coach, typically means you've completed some course of study, um, just like you know, getting certified in anything else, where you're focused on learning and developing skills, and coaching and business topics, perhaps. Um, you've been mentored by a master coach for some period of time to, you know, who monitors your proficiency. Um, there's several certifying groups out there. Uh, I'd say the most common and probably the biggest in the world is the, the International Coach Federation. Um, you know, they've got an excellent, excellent certification process. Uh, Action Coach has its own certification program that's been developed over 28 years. Includes about 300 hours of online training 
guided by a facilitator and then 60 to 100 hours of in-person training from a certified trainer or master coach and then within action coach a newly certified action coaches are assigned a master coach as a mentor for a minimum of 90 days post training and that's depending on their demonstrated proficiency um the there's other other trainings out there but i i, I think action coaches and then icfs that require you to be to demonstrate proficiency under the guidance of a mentor of a master coach um, is really the best program best way to do it so that because it's you know unlike you know passing your medical boards or passing sitting for the cpa exam or you know the uh, the bar association test it, it, it's hard to come up with a test for a business coach that you know that is it w would be pass fail and so it's it's really about results and you know, a master coach can can monitor and mentor and make sure that you're demonstrating enough proficiency to to get your certification. Um, I bet it's a, a lot of it just depends on the fit between the coach and the client. Yeah. So, yeah. So choosing a coach, you know, it, it's really so I, I, I tell, you know, my my clients when I sit down with them, that selecting a coach is really two decisions there's a there's a, it's a personal decision and it's a business decision you know on the personal side you, you need a coach that you're confident you can comfortably work with because you're gonna for it to work for you and you to get a good return on investment you need to be comfortable being open honest and vulnerable with your coach so you can to get maximum value you know so that's on the personal side is somebody you're comfortable that you trust you've built some rapport with um, but then, so that's on the personal side, but then, and then the business decision is a coach that has enough business knowledge, training systems for you to use in your business. Um, there are a lot of good coaches and coaching systems out there. So you can do research, you can review testimonials, you know, look at their, you know, listen, you know, listen, listen to their videos, their training, you know, see, see if you like what they talk about. If they haven't produced a lot of that, you might want to think twice, um, you know, ask if they have a guarantee for their services. And, and the number one thing, and I'm seeing it pop up again, I've run into it multiple times just in the last couple of weeks, uh, be careful about agreeing to long-term contracts. The best coaches work month to month. They don't require you to sign a contract. We, we just talked with a business owner a couple weeks, about three weeks ago, just signed, in one meeting, signed a two-year coaching agreement. And after two weeks, they're already regretting their decision. Um, the best coaches are confident enough in their services that they work month to month, earning the right to be your coach every week, every month. Um, 17 year action coaches philosophy is no contracts. Everything's just monthly. And, um, you know, that's just been our philosophy for 28 years. And that's been mine for 20, for 17 years. And I've never, never had a contract um just just uh just an agreement for how we're going to work together with my clients but it's both that personal and that business decision you need to make and i i could see how a contract would be miserable for the coach as not to mention the client but to try to i guess you could switch coaches if you wanted to hold somebody into a contract or company mm -hmm. wanted to hold somebody to a contract they could switch coaches but then the, the the disappointment and dis-ease that the client had uh, could could sabotage any future relationship with any new coaches. So right. So it's so be two terrible. Thought, yeah, yeah. So two thoughts there. That pop, so one is most of these are in are most coaches aren't part of a team, so there right. isn't a coach to switch. That's one of the things that we're unique. You know, I've got three coaches on my team and and we're growing we'll add more this year by the end of the year um so that there is the option of finding a better fit you know if you like our business approach we can find a better personal fit um and then the other th comment is you know i'll never forget when we had our our our, our, our grand opening here um with the, one of the chambers and there were a couple coaches other coaches who were chamber members that came and and one of them actually pulled me aside and said how can you work month to month without a contract? 
Aren't you afraid of losing your clients? And, and that's the reason why they have they, they try to lock people into long-term contracts because they're afraid of losing their clients. I'm not afraid of losing a client. In fact, you know what I teach I'm a, so I'm a ma- I am a master coach and I'm a, I'm a global trainer. I, I've trained coaches all over the world um, for the last three years um, once I got certified as a trainer. Um, you know I teach coaches the fastest way to lose a client is to try not to lose a client. And so um, just coach them and you're either the, you're either the right coach for them or you're not. Um, just be the coach. But you know I have coaches that ask me how you know how can you do that? Aren't you afraid of losing? And that's just that's just that, that's the wrong coach for anybody if that's their mindset. Mm-hmm. So I <clears throat> through my networking and just being in business, I've, I've met multiple coaches. And I sense that there's a that there are several different categories of coaches um, and a, and approaches. Can you mm-hmm. talk a little bit about the variety of maybe models would be a better word uh, of coaching? Yeah, there's so I would say there's there's three that I see a lot. One is um, kind of the the fixed curriculum. So there's basically a pre-established syllabus for what we're going to coach you on. Um, and it's kind of irrespective of whether you need that lesson this week or not. Um, it's just a series of lessons. Um, so that's one model. Um, then the, uh, the next model is kind of the needs-based model, and that's, that's the one that we follow. And there's no, no two businesses are alike, no two business owners are alike. Um, you know, I coach multiple businesses in the same industry, and we work on completely different things. Um, so, you know, our, our coaching is more based on the goals of the owner and the status of the current business and coming up with, you know, a, a path to get from where they are today to where they'd like to be in the future. Um, because only they can define what they want their business to look like and what they want their life to look like. So, and our coaching is based on, so we have a, you know, we have a, a business model, a framework that we apply, but it's different for every business. We start at a different point um, and no two, no two clients get the same coaching because every person is different and, every, and is in a different place in their life and every business is different and is in a different place in its life cycle. The, so that's the second type. I call that kind of the needs-based, um, which is what, what we, we do. And then the third is executive coaching, which is um, more about usually um, human behavior, leadership, um, where you're not talking so much about the business aspects, but you're, you're coaching on, usually it's leadership, team development, um, communication skills, maybe possibly public speaking and presenting skills. Um, and so that's the third. Usually that's for, you know, the, the bigger businesses where, you know, the C-suite um, and you're not, and, and, and we do some of that, but, but not very much. It's not my favorite thing in the world, to be honest. Um, it's why I didn't go back to corporate. Um, and, um, but it, the executive code is very powerful. It's very, you know, it's very, um, you can get great results, but you're not focused so much on P and L's and other things that a small business has to worry about, unless unless that's that executive's job. Um, but you're really more focused on behavior coaching at that point, and what is executive and leadership behavior. So those are kind of the three models I see out there the most. Might someone be referred for executive coaching by upper management? Uh, either wanting to groom them or maybe they're seeing problems with their leadership. So it might be corrective um, coaching and not necessarily the in the uh, that that the client is motivated. To, they're not coming for this. They're referred from above or. Uh, right. Does, yeah. 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 The majority of my executive clients over the years have have been where either HR or 
the CEO or COO brought us in to help. And it was one of those two, one, a, you know, an, an executive, a man, a middle manager who was either struggling that they wanted, that they still saw value, but they're struggling with some things and they just hadn't, HR just hadn't been able to do it with their training or grooming them for a promotion. So yeah, those, those are the two most common. And typically it's, typically we, we come in through the HR department, but sometimes it might be a, a CEO, COO that, that brings us in. Okay. You know, one thing that you mentioned was that um, you might coach multiple clients in the same industry. Um, right. I can see, I can see the uh, how it can work, but I can also see how it could breed distrust. So, how do you walk the line, or how do you divide the line? Um, do you just not disclose anything about? their business to their competitors? How do you how do you keep that trust? And do you disclose uh, that you are working with somebody else in the same field up front? I do disclose. So um, no, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't like surprising my clients. So I do disclose. Um, and some worry about it, but you know my, my commitment to them is that you know my relationship with them and their business and their business information is a hundred percent confidential proprietary to them. However, if they're marketing, all of their competitors see their marketing, so there's nothing confidential about their marketing because everybody sees it. Um, the things that are private tend to be stuff we do in house. And then their and then their numbers, um, you know how much and you know how much they pay people. But even some of that that's you know very public. Um, but there's there's been very few times when I felt like I needed, and I've gone and gotten permission. But I, where I've needed to talk to, so you know that the, I work with a lot of dentists and optometrists, and. Um, and when they're in competing areas, it's only been a few times where I felt the need to, to, to use something I coached one optometrist on with another one, because every, again, every business is different, every practice is different, every person. And so the goals are very different. You know, I had a HVAC company actually refer me to their, one of their number one competitors because they were at completely different levels and completely different goals and what they're trying to do and they saw that this guy was really struggling and they wanted him to succeed because they had a very abundant mindset that hey if we all do well we all do well right um and so they actually introduced me to him and they told him hey you ought to hire mark so i get that but um that's it's it's pretty easy conversation um you know and it, this goes back to that you know coaching decision it's a personal decision and, and it's a business decision you either trust your coach or you don't you know if you really think that i would give away your trade secrets share your profitability and you know then i'm not the right coach for you mm. and our relationship would never work if you truly felt that way Mm -hmm. So I would think that it, it would tend to be uh, where, where it might uh, get blurry. Maybe let's say somebody that you're still coaching did something, a tactic that was successful for them. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's when I think it might be tempting uh, right. to say, mm -hmm. hey, somebody, somebody tried this and it really worked. Um, and maybe they help create the concept or something. That that would be the the area I would think. Right. Anything that's like. kind of I kind of proprietary like that. That no, you know, we we created this. We've not seen anybody else ever do that. No, we we got to keep that here. But 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 that's that's the one percent. You know, you you work in small business. You know, you've worked in the small business you know arena. You know, for yourself for your career. Um, you know, there's very little new in terms of, you know, marketing hasn't changed in hundreds of years. The technology we have has, you know, sales hasn't changed. 
just the technology we have at our disposal, the different media we can use. But the fundamentals, you know, are the fundamentals, and they always have been. Um, and and I'm not a consultant, so I don't bring a lot of the ideas. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm a coach. I I help the business owner unleash their own ideas, because they're more likely to implement them well if they feel ownership of them than if I just come in and say do this. They don't feel as much ownership. Their their their, their heart and spirit's not in it. But I help them figure out. Because most business owners know what they should be doing, they just don't do it. So a lot of it's just unleashing their own power of what they already know. Mm-hmm. So, how does someone know that they need a business coach? And you know, I would. Well, it, I think that's a good place to start. How how should someone evaluate their situation? Uh, to believe that they should hire a coach. So I'll start off with my with my trivial answer and that, you know, nobody needs a coach, but everybody should want a coach. Um, because need a coach, the, the pro, you know, that, yeah, I try not to use it. That makes it sound like something broken. You know, you're failing. Um, you know, you're not good enough. And that's not really the case. Um, so I try to avoid those terms, but I, but the question's a good, a great one. And it's, so if you're open to new ideas, um, and you're, and you're willing to admit that you don't know everything, then you're coachable. So that, that's kind of the first thing is, are you coachable? You know, am I willing to admit I don't know everything and am I willing to, am I open to new ideas and new ways of thinking? So that's that. So then it's, You know, the times in a business where you need a coach, I would say, fall into two categories. One, you've hit you've hit a ceiling where you've grown your business to the point where you don't know what to do next. Um, You know, you've been successful, you've gotten it to a point, but you're not you know, you're not done. But you're not sure what to do next. You've tried some stuff. You grow a little, but it bounces back, or you grow a little, but sales go up, profits go down. That's never any fun. Um, You know, more work for less money, not a good thing. Um, You know, so you've kind of run out of ideas. You've hit your own limit. And and, and in the corporate world, they call it the Peter Principle, where everybody rises to the level of their incompetence. Um, So it's kind of the small business version of the Peter Principle. You get to the point where you just don't know what to do next. Um, so that's where I would say that's where a majority of our clients come from. They're in that space. They're they've gotten they've been successful. They've grown. They're making. They're profitable, but they've just run out of ideas, and the stuff they're wor- trying isn't working. So that's a great time. And then the other is one where you just you want to grow, and you want to accelerate it, and you don't. You know, there's two ways to grow. To, there's two ways to grow anything to get better at anything. You can either learn from your own mistakes or you can learn from other people's mistakes. So if you're ready to just grow and you wanna accelerate and learn from other people's mistakes, that's a great time to hire a coach. Because I come in with 28 years of, of materials and all the wrong things to do in a business. Um, you know, and and how to and how to avoid them you know so implement that yes that's a great idea let's implement it right in your business you know because for every tactic strategy there's a thousand ways to implement it wrong for your specific business and only a couple ways to implement it right in your business and it's all about return on investment you know going back you know and that accelerator gets you a better return on investment and then you know the you know if you're growing successfully and you just stop growing because you don't know what to do again it, it enables a great return on investment and i guess going back to the question about how to choose a coach don't choose a coach that doesn't help you figure out if coaching would be a good investment for your business you know we you know we target a three 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 x roi in the first year and a 10x roi over 10 years or over three years sorry 
Say that again. 3X. So 3X ROI in the first year on your coaching. So if you pay me $2,000 a month, so the first year is $24,000, you should expect a three times return on investment of that of $72,000 in growth. And over 10 years, or over, I'm sorry, over three years, you should expect a 10X or $240,000 growth of your business from your coaching and if your coach isn't talking about numbers like that you know are, you know are they really going to be the right fit for what you and your business need um and just to clarify make sure everybody understands this is not that their business should go 3x or 10x it is that it is the cost of the coaching should be worth three times the amount that they're paying over a year or uh, uh, or 10x over three years right so the prop basically profit right so pays for coaching you know our it you know our, our goal is always within four months to identify to find profit enough enough extra profit a month that so you that pays for your coaching and then everything you do after that, after the four months, is 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 free because you've paid for it in the first four months. Got it. You know, one of the things that impressed me about your approach uh, when I met you some months ago was that you really offer some time for people to get to know you and to get to try on this coaching relationship. Would you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that? Yeah. And that goes back to that, you know, two decisions, the personal decision. Um, you know, coaching's not something you can, like a car that you can just buy, right? You know, you can go kick the tires and, and see it, you know. So, you know, we go through a multi-step process of getting to know our firm and our, our firm's philosophy and approach, um, you know, what we teach, how we teach it. Um, we do a full, you know, we, we do a full 90-minute, basically, business analysis we call it a business diagnostic where it's basically 90 minute looking under the hood sitting down with your with with a coach and the owner sitting down looking under the hood what's going on in this business talking about it asking questions learning about challenges opportunities strengths weaknesses um so that we can so we have enough time to see can we communicate effectively um because if we can't communicate effectively and you're not confident answering some of these questions, the coaching relationship might not be the right one for you. And then we're also looking at is, you know, what I call is the business coachable. So part of the looking under the hood is, is the business coachable, which means do I see where we can get a three X return on investment through coaching? Because if we can't, it doesn't make sense for you to invest your time and money in one of our programs, if in looking at that in those details, it doesn't work. And so we will typically do two, three meetings, getting to know um, so that, because it's that personal relationship that really matters. If we can't communicate effectively, um, then it doesn't matter how smart I am or how good a business owner you are, the relationship won't work. And coaching is really a relationship. You know, I, I you know, I, I'm in a deep relationship. My clients stay with me on average two and a half years. Um, you know, I've got, a, you know, 10 year, 12 year clients, you know, that, you know, we've been through divorces together, buying out partners, um, cancer scares, multiple cancer scares. Um, you know, we, it's a very personal relationship. Um, you know, through that we've grown, <coughs> grown the business. But you know, I, we coach people, and they have, and we coach people that own businesses, and we help them get the most out of it. And so we've got to spend some time up front and get to know, and you know, make sure we 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 trust each other to, enough to be vulnerable, um, because that's what it takes to the change. When you think about athletes and their coaches, um, and there's lots of great coaches, but you know, the, the, the you know the athletes that do the best are the ones that pair up with a coach that they're willing to take critical feedback from, that they're willing to take honest feedback um, and, and learn from. 
and and you you won't you won't see you know a you won't see an athlete or an actor or an actress or um, nowadays a CEO, anybody at the top of their profession, an artist, a musician, you won't see any of them without multiple coaches. So if you want to be at the top of your profession as a business owner, you know, you should have multiple coaches. I've got two coaches. You know, I've got a business coach who helps me with the with with my business and how to be a CEO um, on the you know operations of my business and then I've got a thought coach who works with me on how to think how to think like a CEO um, you know because I you know I've had the shift from just being a coach to now I've got a team of five and so I have to be a, a manager a leader a CEO. Uh, I've got to be more strategic, and so I've got to think differently than I've ever had to think before. And so I've got I've got a business coach helping me just on the the operational sides of my business and marketing and sales, and a thought coach who's helping me think like a CEO, think like a leader, be a thought leader, be strategic. And that's a, that's a shift that I you know I've chosen. I wanted to make, and I want to accelerate it, and I want to be great at it. So I I, I pay a coach to help me with that. Nice. I wonder how often it happens that someone brings in a coach and they're they're sort of worn out and they were exhausted from trying different things and things are not working and they come to a realization that they're really ready to leave the business mm -hmm. and that the focus shifts from how do I improve to how do I get this business to a place where I can find a, uh, someone to buy me out or succession plan with a family member? Um, how often does that happen? Uh, I'd say that's about 20% of our clients are, are in that, you know, they're, they're done and they don't want, and so, um, and they want help with that. And, you know, we've got a client right now wants to sell her business and you know we talked about you know who you know so now we're going through the process of helping her identify you know who might be candidates to buy your business it's tough in a small business when when you're a small business because you know the value the value is in, is in you know when you grow a small business yourself you know there's so much of you in the business right there's so much of your your sweat blood and tears and your passion and, and your family and your and you know, people people aren't going to pay for that. And so it's helping them understand what 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 value will people pay for your business, and how to and you know what can we do now to start building that value to make it more valuable, while we look at so who are who might be a buyer for this type of business? You know, is it one of your employees? Is it a family member? You know, we we we've worked with some. You know, I'm, I'm getting ready to work with a father son. Where the father wants to be out in two years and you know doesn't think the son's ready to take it over and the son's like no i want to i want to start running this business tomorrow so we're going to work together to come up with uh, an exit plan that where dad feels confident that he's leaving it in good hands and the son has the skills to continue to grow the business that he may may or may not have right now there's differing opinions on that no surprise um but that's and that's becoming more and more common as uh, as as the baby boomer generation who owns hundreds of millions of businesses gets ready to retire or you know or at least you know downsize th their careers they're looking to do that um you know we work with some business brokers and help help them you know identify people and um just um but it's a it's becoming more and more prevalent we see a lot of generational things um, and then right now, you know, just some people are just, they're just exhausted and it's like, you know, help me put this in the shape it needs to be to sell and then help me figure out how to sell it. You bring up, when you bring up the father son situation, uh, I can imagine that one of the hats you need to be able to wear is a mediator or, or conflict resolution, mm -hmm. uh, person. Uh, and I would imagine that's, uh, more and more important 
It, it does, and I've done, and you know, that's one thing that, you know, we talked about kind of the initial training for certification. You know, that's some of the things that we do in our team for continuing ed. So, you know, we, you know, we do probably another 50, 60 hours a year of training. You know, and that's one of the areas that I've, I've done, done some training on, taken some online courses, um, and um, been at some trainings on just how to deal deal with with family situations um you know we coach spouses um you know you know my wife works with me um and uh you know we we so you know we've been through that um but you know spouses working together um you know i've got a great client that um just did a you know just you know we asked them recently you know what, what's the number one thing you know at, the, at their one year anniversary you know what's the number one thing you, you, you've gotten out of coaching and they said our marriage you know, we can work together, and it was during COVID. You know, originally when they started, he was uh, out doing field in the field doing sales, and she worked at the home office. But with COVID, he had to come back in, and they were working together in the house. So I had to coach them through how to separate coworkers with partners, life partners, and how to find the time. And so. Um, a little bit of that and you know I've got a couple mentors that I go to for help I'm, I'm you know I'm not I am NOT a mental health professional I'm not a licensed therapist um, I have referred clients to therapists before that, that needed it I do it lovingly and with great care and um, some have taken me up on it some haven't um, that, that's okay it's their choice um, but you know some things a business coach just isn't qualified to to handle but I can recognize, you know, I've, you know, experience, I can recognize a situation when it's like, no, this isn't something I can help you with. You need to talk to somebody who specializes in, in these situations. And that's a different kind of professional. And, you know, I can help you find the right person for your situation. If you'd like some help with that. I'm sure that's a really delicate referral. It, it <laughs> is. Um, and I've had some clients fire me over it and and that's okay my job is to tell them the honest to goodness truth and to not take up any more of their time and money if i'm not the one they need um so you know i, I can't you know I, I just can't do that with good conscience to keep taking their time and money when they when they need to be investing it in something else that's not me so you you probably gave some answer to this but this is a different twist on it. Uh -huh. um, and that is, if if I'm looking for a business coach, what do, what do I, what should I look for um, in interviewing a coach? Um, first, again, that, that trust. Do I trust this person? Um, are they trying to sell me something? Uh, and do they, you know, are they trying, you know, I guess that's the biggest one is, are they trying to sell me something or are they genuinely trying to help me make a good decision for my business? You know, our, our process is, is set up to help them learn about us and, their, and the individual coaches and see if there's a comfort, a per, comfort on a personal level there, but then also to help them learn what they should be looking for you know what 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 should they be working on so that they can make a good decision if you know if your coach isn't taking spending a couple hours with you diagnosing what's going on in your business then they're just trying to sell you coaching and so if you find somebody's trying to sell you coaching that's probably not going to be the best fit for you um it may but it may but it may not and it's you know if they don't take you through that process of discovery you know um you know financial planners have a discovery process where you know they don't start offering you investment you know they're required by law to take you through a process to ask you a lot of questions before they're allowed to offer you investment opportunities this is no different it's not there's no law about it there's you know guiding it but you know no coach should should try to sell you a program without going through a, a discovery process looking under the hood and really understanding what's going on, not just in your business, but in your life. How's this affecting your life? Because that might have an impact 
on what you can actually implement. You know, it's like, you know, coaching could help your business, but you know, you're not in a place right now where you've got the time to invest in this. So why don't we wait a couple months, take care of things at home, especially this last couple of years with COVID. You know, I, I've recommended some people, why don't you stay home until the kids, you know, till the kids are in school, because to do what you want to do is going to take some time that you just don't have. And nothing would be worse than half doing some of these strategies. And so it's, you know, it's looking for that. And then also, again, you know, do, does your coach guarantee their services? We guarantee our one-to-one -one coaching. Four months, we call it, we'll find our fee in four months, which means we'll, we'll identify enough things to generate enough monthly prof, ongoing monthly profit that pays for coaching. So that, you know, you're really only investing four months in coaching and then the business is gonna pay for it forever after that. Um, and our guarantee is, you know, it's on our website, but it's simply, if you do everything you agree to do and we don't generate the revenue and the profit, then we'll coach you for free until we do. So in any, you know, if you're going to be, if coaching feels like an expense beyond four months, you shouldn't do it. You know, um, as we start to wrap up, uh, there's a, a paradigm shift in something that you talked about earlier. It was several, several minutes ago. And that was being able to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and you know, this was a discussion. This is a discussion that we would not have, we would not be having 20 years ago. Right. Uh, a business owner, especially male business owner, um, being vulnerable to anyone, right. much less uh, being accountable and vulnerable to a coach. Um, and I know that Brene Brown uh, really mm -hmm. focuses on this um, in her talks um this is a this is a real cultural shift for mm -hmm. especially for males um and uh well 20 years ago there were much fewer women business leaders mm -hmm. um, than there are today but talk a little bit about what has happened culturally with us that has enabled that shift to, to take place and to, to openly and sometimes comfortably talk about that. Although I would imagine there are still people that are not comfortable with expressing vulnerability when, when you're coaching. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so that's a great point. Yeah, at 20 years ago, 17 year ago, years ago when I first started, um, my clients did not want anybody to know they had a coach. They we're afraid of that. Um, and a lot of that is just, you know, society's pressure. So I think, you know, one of the things that has opened up vulnerability is, uh, you know, it's one of the few good things about social media. Um, people have learned that it's okay to not put on a pretty face all the time. It's okay to be normal. It's okay to make a mistake. Um, and you know, and then the internet in general over the last 20 years, a lot more education available, just a lot more visibility that, hey, it isn't, you know, you know, you know, being stoic and, you know, I can, you know, some of it's generational. Um, you know, uh, I'm the tail end of the baby boom generation, and you know, we were taught, you know, go to work, do your job, shut up, <laughs> you know, get a pension, right? But you know, that all went away, and so. Um, so I, know, I coach my clients on that. You know, that's one of the questions I ask in the look under the hood is, you know, are you going to be willing to admit when you don't know something? You mean, when, are you going to be willing to admit when you've made a mistake? Because uh, I can't help you if you're not. And we talk about that. And we talk our very first coaching session where we talk about kind of the rules of engagement with your coach. You know, we talk about vulnerability. Um, but I have to help them do that. Um, you know, I, I've learned with training and experience, I've learned how to help them through that, both, both men and women. Um, 
you know, in in general, the you know the older generation struggle with it more because we were we were taught to bottle up our feelings and um, feelings were bad. But uh, you know, modern society with social media and that has has made it more evident that it's okay to actually have feelings. Um, but yeah, I get I get clients who struggle with that, and but we talk about that. That's because that's that's more important than business. You know, there are times when there'll be something I'll say, hey, you know, I know we were gonna talk about this today, but you know, it sounds like we need to talk about this instead. You know, we, we start off every coaching session with what we call a wiffle, W-I-F-L-E, what I feel like expressing. And so from day one with our clients, we teach them that not only it's okay to have feelings, it's okay to express and share them. And we give them a safe environment to do that. They're not recorded, they're not published in minutes anywhere. They're just between you and I. And then I share what I'm feeling that day. Because we're now, I was going to ask you that. Do you model that back back to them? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, because we're human beings, we have feelings. And our our actions come from our thoughts and our emotions. And so sometimes I'll have to spend some time early on teaching that concept of our actions and results actually start out as thoughts and emotions. And if we stifle those, we'll never take the right actions to get it, to get the right results. That's you know I you know that's something I that's one of the things I, I learned and a model I learned called the tear model um, from my thought coach, Tracy. Um, you know, it's thoughts lead to emotions, which lead to actions, which lead to results. And it's usually our emotions that get in the way of taking the right actions. And so we have to go back and figure what what are the thoughts leading to the to the wrong emotion? How do you know if I wanted a different emotion, what different thought do I need to have? And you know, and I train that and I've had to learn how to do that and I and I teach clients that, but it's, you know, that's part of Brene, you know, and some of that comes from Brene Brown's. I love her stuff. She's got some great TED Talks, other other videos, some great books on vulnerability and trust. Um, and, um, you know, it's really, it's really powerful. And, and I use some of that material to help think through that. But, you know, everything we do is related to some thought and emotion we have inside. And if we, if we need to get different results, we need to take different actions, most likely, which may mean we need to think different thoughts and have different feelings and emotions. But it's a, yeah, it's a, so, you know, I, I went out and got trained on that because that's a, that's a big, that's a big part of, of helping. And that's part of what we cover in the, you know, I said in, you know, in the diagnostic, we're looking under the hood. I'm not just looking at the business, I'm looking at the owner because I've got to be confident that, that I can work with them and that, and, and that they'll, be, they'll, they'll be willing to be honest with me. Because 17 years, I'm a pretty good judge of whether they're being honest with me when we're, when we're looking at their business. And if they're not, then I can't coach them. And I, won't, and I won't offer the opportunity to enroll in a program. You know, I've had plenty, plenty of business owners that I've met with that I've, I, you know, at the end it says like, I just don't think we're a good fit for each other. Got it. You know, uh, one last thought, and I'll open it up to you for anything that you might not have shared. But I think one of the contributing factors to normalizing vulnerability is the the tech industry recently, um, because the tech industry, I think, emphasizes that you've got to fuck up. You know that it's okay that that's what we that's how we learn. And they're not, they don't penalize people for making mistakes. They may penalize them for not exerting effort, but not if they're exerting effort and making mistakes. So mm -hmm. I think, I think the, the tech norm um, in business uh, or a type of business has normalized that too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a book called Fail Forward. I think it's a Jack Canfield book. Can't remember for sure. It's called Fail Forward. Um, that talks about the concept of that basically you're going to fail. So fail fast. So
So and that's, an, that's another you know, concept I teach my clients. You know, when we're getting into the unknown, we're gonna make some mistakes. Let's make them really, really fast. Let's pay real close attention so we don't make big mistakes, but we're gonna make some. So let's just do it and fail fast so we can learn faster. Um, and Elon Musk builds huge numbers of rockets expecting them to blow up, you know? Right. And let's build them as inexpensively as we can because we're gonna blow them up. Let's um, blow them up as fast as we can so that we can learn how not to blow them up. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so the tech, really yeah, tech cool. industry is a great industry that's proven that, you know, as a software developer, you know, it was, you know, the, the sprint concept, um, you know, just, you know, do a build every Friday just so we can figure out where we're at and what works and what doesn't so we can move on to the next thing. So we've covered a lot of ground and I've, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, is there anything that you think is important in your work as a coach um, or any of these topics that we've talked about that, that you haven't shared that you think is really important that you'd like to share? So, yeah, one thing that is, you know, so two questions that we get all the time are probably some of our most frequently asked questions are, you know, how, what do you know about my industry? And so that, so I guess and that goes back to types of coaching. So that's, that's a fourth type of coaching that I failed to talk about, but there are industry specific coaches. So um, pick, you know, pick an industry. There are industry specific that just specialize in that. Um, and you know, so when I, when I'm asked, you know, what do you know about my industry? My answer is always the good news is very little <laughs> because that means I won't bring any preconceived notions about your business. I expect you to be the expert in your industry. I'm an expert in business. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna marry business skills with your technical knowledge and skills. And we're gonna figure out which business skills make the most sense to apply to your business so that your business performs and looks the way like like how you want it to perform in your life and how it fits into your life and, and it works the way you do now an industry specific coach will have deep knowledge so i'll use dentistry as an example because this is where this comes up a lot if you don't care how your dental practice runs you don't care what it looks like you just want to make money being a dentist, you should hire a dental industry coach and just do everything they say. It will work, it will make you money, but at the end of the day, it will not be your dental practice, it'll be theirs. I, I call that dentist in a box. You know, it's a turnkey, it will work if you do it. But if you want to build your dental practice the way you want to, you want it to look the way you want it to look, you want it to fit into your life and lifestyle the way you want it to fit, that's when you should look at a business coach who isn't industry specific. Because we're going to help you fashion it to meet your goals and your dreams, not to fit a model. So, um, so that, so, you know, that's, that's one answer to that question is, you know, what do I know? I don't need to know a lot about your industry. I'll obviously go educate myself if I never coach anybody in your industry so that I don't make it, I don't come up with stupid ideas that just don't make sense fit. You know, it's one of the advantages of action coach. We've got 1200 coaches around the world. I can put the word out and I'll find somebody who's either owned a business like yours or coached a business like yours and learn what I need to learn so that working together we can just make good decisions together. But I don't need to know a lot about your business and business owners, they all think, well, oh, my business is different. Yeah, it's not. Um, every business is the same. Um, it's the business owner that's different. And that's the part where we, we meld the business owner's strengths, goals, dreams, vision with what, what's possible with that industry and, and marry those together so that the business meets the needs of the business owner um, in the life and lifestyle they want to have for them, their family, their community. You know, I, I have, I have clients with all kinds of dreams and visions and when they go off the, the path and, get, and go a little nuts on me, I'll pull them back and say, Hey, so have you given up on the idea of, you know, whatever they said their, their dream was, 
you know, so I see you're doing that. So have you given up on this? Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Sorry. I'm back. You know, and that's a way to pull them back in. And so I, the more I know about their dreams, uh, the better I can help them, you know, do the course corrections on the way because nothing ever goes in a straight line when it comes to business or life, right? There's always detours. And so it's figuring out the detours faster. But that's probably the biggest question I get. And then, you know, are you going to tell me how to run my business? No, I'm going to help you figure out how to run your business. But you're going to you're only going to do it if you if you feel ownership of it and you won't feel ownership if I tell you. So I'm going to help you figure out how to do it. And learn the skills to do it on your own without me. That's what make that's what make me an effective coach. You know, um, you know, the top golfers and baseball players in the world. You know, Lamar Jackson, who had an awesome night last night, you know, his quarterback coach didn't come on the field and throw four touchdown passes for him. He helped Lamar get in the right place in his head and physically so that he could deliver that when the opportunity arose. But, you know, his coach didn't come on the field and stand there and do it for him. His coach talked to him over the months and years to help them be ready for that moment. And Lamar had, a, had, had, had an incredible moment last night. It was fun to watch, especially if you're you're a Lamar fan. Got it. Well, um, Mark, thanks so much. This is this has been a rich um, experience, and uh, I hope it's been valuable for those who who watch it. So I really thank you for being on, uh, and it gives me much more insight into coaching uh, and into you as a person. So I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you, Mark. Yeah. And actually, you know, I always, you know, just like in my coaching, I learn as much from these as your listeners are going to learn from it. You know, I, I learn as much as much from every coaching session as my clients do, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm a business owner and the thought process I go through to help them, you know, I'm sitting there, oh, I'm thinking, why am I not doing that? Um, oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. I better go do that. So I learned a ton from these as well. And um, I do appreciate the time and the opportunity to, to help out your listeners. That's, that's, you know, our mission is to help as many business owners as we can any way we can, whether it's through education, you know, training, workshops, you know, all the above, coaching. It, it's any way we can we want to help because it just builds, it makes our communities better. And when our communities are better, everybody rises and everybody wins. Well, so that begs the question, how do people get in touch with you? And I would imagine um, a lot more of your work is virtual than ever before coming or wherever we are with COVID. Um, mm -hmm. So I would imagine it doesn't matter wh where they live, um, if they're in the Louisville, Kentucky area or not. How do people best get in touch with you? And we'll, if you'll send all this information to us, mm -hmm. we'll put it in the show notes down below. Yeah, best way is to go is go through our website and just request a you know this is simple to top, request a, a, a session with a coach, and um, we'll ask for a little bit of information and um, you can you can schedule it directly if you want, um, or you can add, request a call, and we'll typically do a 15 minute call to figure out what you want to do, what makes sense. Again, it's you know let's not schedule 90 minutes if it doesn't make sense so we can kind of schedule just kind of a quick 15 20 minute call get to know each other a little bit figure out what the best next step is but the best way is just go to our website and click on that um you can and what is that what's that website and that's actioncoachbluegrass.com um or or our new office is action coach so in so action coach and then soin for southern indiana so in.com um, you can go to either one of those um, to request a call from a coach and, and myself or one of my team will call and schedule time and figure out, you know, what your needs are and what would be the best fit next step for you um, to do that. And um, we offer we, we offer everybody free coaching. Um, never turn anybody away. Uh, we do about 10 hours of free coaching a week um, for, for businesses just to help, just, just, to, just to help and um, give back. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Um, and I'll turn to, to the audience here and just say, uh, if you're interested in finding out more about Thrive Co-Living Communities, go to that thrivecoLivingCommunities.org 
and find out more. Um, we're on YouTube uh, regularly and all of your favorite audio podcast stations. So just look us up uh, in, with any of those and we'll continue to have interesting discussions like we did with Mark and multiple other topics uh, from things that people are passionate about uh, to things that people are very um, uh, skilled at, uh, all types of topics uh, that we'll explore. So thanks again, everybody. And Mark, thank, thank you. Thanks for joining us for another great episode of the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. To learn more about our mission and how you can support our vision of creating co-living communities worldwide, please visit us at thrivecolivingcommunities.org. To receive advanced viewings of our podcasts and other exclusive content, find us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Thrive Co-Living Communities. You can also learn more ways to support our mission in the show notes below. Amazon Smile, GoFundMe, Kroger, and our own Thrive Gear store, where you can buy t-shirts, hats, and many other items. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon.